Mm-hmm. On the Sydney mm-hmm. Futures Exchange, the sky uh, finished up 25 at 2,557. We're doing something like ten and a half trillion dollars worth of business a year in nominal terms, which means on average, two hundred billion dollars a day trades on the SFE. This is where all the orders come down through all the way from all around the world, come down to the Sydney Futures Exchange, and they use an open outcry, so you'll bid all your offer them, and then people will trade, you know, they'll buy and sell. You are speculating on whether interest rates on a hourly, daily, minute basis is going to go up or down. You're bullish if you think the price is going to go up, and you're bearish if you think the price is going to go down. And that extends to things being good versus things being bad. Here we go. Well, the buzz of trading is it's instant gratification. You can make a lot of money very quickly. Let's throw the dice and we'll put our money on the table and set it's just like one big casino out there. The futures market's a place where risk is transferred from someone who do- doesn't want the risk to someone who's prepared to accept the risk. And that's about it. Five. Buy 200. Buy 300. Buy everything you can fucking get your hands on. I don't try to predict where the market's going to go. It's 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 like it's it's like a it's like a comet going going through in the sky. You can't see the comet, but you can see the tail. We can see the price action, but we can't actually ever really grasp the market. You can't really ever really grasp the market. All you can do is try to jump on board the comet and ride it for a while. All we can see is the tail. That's the price action. It's historical prices. People, you can analyze charts up the yin yang. You're looking at the tail of the comet. You got to learn to get aboard the comet and ride the comet. That's the idea of, of, of trading. It's the idea of getting on board the market and, and doing what the market tells you to do. It's a very hard thing to do. I would say only two or three times a year I really feel like I'm on board the comet. But when I'm aboard the comet, it's the best feeling in the world. <laughs> well, his name's John. He's American. And uh, he's a big trader, a very big trader. Um, so. He came into the pit and he was like, with a very strong American accent. Somebody said, it's not your war, John. He goes, it is now. So they called him Rambo. I remember well, the first time I walked onto the futures floor of the Chicago Board of Trade. I was in college and I was taking a, a course in investments. I knew from the second I walked on that floor, electricity went through me. My skin tingled and I said, this is my destiny. I mean, I just knew it straight away. Futures trading isn't for the weak-hearted, and it's certainly not for everybody. When people come up to me and, and that, that know me that, and, that, and know what I do, and they say, "Well, John, I've got an extra ten thousand dollars. Can you know? Can you can you do something with it for me?" I go, "No, there's absolutely nothing I can do with it for you. You know, I, I trade my own money only. That's all. I mean, I have you know, I have enough problems doing that. You know, more. You know, God forbid, I took your ten thousand dollars and lost it in a couple hours. I mean, you'd, you'd kill me." Uh, I think, you know, the reason the market's very anxious, that they're worried about the fact that Japan uh, weakness will lead to China being forced eventually to devalue the yuan. Uh, and then people are saying if that were to happen, that could destabilize the rest of Asia and, and also uh, maybe uh, put some pressure on Latin America as well. So there's sort of a house of cards uh, that people are starting worrying about coming apart again. Hello, mate. See you, John. Thanks for the ride in. See you tomorrow. Oh. Well, here we go. It's another day. Brokers, in many respects, are like taxi drivers. Well, at least I did the dishes last night, or part of them. We're here to take someone from A to B, and from and from B back to A. Turn the lights on for the day, morning all. You can't be too opinionated because it's the traders who are opening the risk, and and they're the people who who really want to, to make the cold decision whether to, to buy or sell. We're here to provide information to support them in the decision-making process. 
Yeah, but they all in with on you. The great thing about broking is whether they make money or lose money, you're going to get paid for the transaction. The only way you can not make money broking is not do any business. So you got to get inside the customer's head and you got to, you know, provide them with a service that they that they need, become part of their daily life, that they have to talk to you every day or they can't do what they want to do. I mean, everybody reads the papers, but if I can find a couple of articles that capture a feeling, then I'll send it out in the package. The Australian dollar friendless and local currency markets more volatile than any time since the Banana Republic days. The effects of the crisis in Asia will almost certainly damp or dampen net exports. That'll do. Okie dokie. This will wake him up. Ten past seven. That's the lower aisles. And uh, you can snorkel out there. There's a beach out there, lighthouse. It's a uh, national park, so you, can, you know, not a lot, lot, not a lot to fish around it. I know that. Hello, morning, John. The bond rallied from about one o'clock. I've sent you a two-minute tick chart. Should be on your machine. Okay, that. Um, yeah, bills, please. The bills yeah. have all improved yeah. substantially. Yeah. I'm fairly, con fairly convinced I'll trade up to fifty. And uh, maybe even 60. All right, so let me 250 uh, set bills at 14. OCO marches at 95. But there we go. I'm back to work. John uh, Moulton resides primarily in far north Queensland, um, and I would think that he spends now only about 5% of his trading days on the trading floor. And I'm sure that when you've spoken to him, he's he's been able to elaborate how he can how he can trade just as successfully off the trading floor as he can trade on the trading floor. My fucking computer doesn't want to stay on. Nobody fuck around. Oh no wonder. My fucking this is this is great. My phone lines are fucked. Telstra, in its, in its wisdom, came out the other day and, and put in a uh, temporary phone line. They have no idea this, this could cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's being fucked up the way it is. Anyway, what are you going to do? It's an omen. It's an omen to sit on my hands this morning and not trade, maybe. Aha. I know all I got to do is this. Get the new phone line in. There. Put that in there. Voila. Clear line. Beautiful. <laughs> A little alternative thinking works here. You know what the real sad part is, is this telephone is only gonna is only gonna wanna work out there. It doesn't want work right here. If I move five feet that way, the fucking thing works. I'm gonna, I need to call directly to the floor. <clears throat> Can you put me through the axle for just for a second? Are there any spread orders in the pit I should know about right now? Is it still bid there? Uh, listen, can you call me up with this stuff before it goes out of the pit? I mean, I, you're telling me stuff that's already happened. I, it doesn't do me a whole lot of good. I would love to have sold that at 30 points. I was buying the bills and selling the three years last night, and this is, that, would be, that would have been a good opportunity to liquidate it. First time, okay. which bills are saying they would bid over? I just said it's No, just as soon as, as soon as anything hits that pit, can you call me straight away with it, please? Thank you, mate. By the time he calls me and tells me what's going on, the, the trade has already occurred and gone, and there's not much I can do about it. So, you know, the floor is still got, you know, the floor has still got a, heaps of advantages. My profitability would be a lot higher if, if I was still on the floor. So there you go. 
There are about 450 people on the trading floor. 300 of them work for the brokers, the banks, the institutions. And then there's about 150 or locals trading their own money. Those locals trading their own money make or lose the way they trade. They buy it, they make money. If it goes up, they sell it, they make money if it goes down. As far as a pit trader goes, you have to be quick, aggressive, loud. I, I sort of establish what's going on in the pit and, you know, when traders get orders, try to panic them more into, into making trades that they don't really want to make or that they have to make in order to fulfill the order. You can lose a lot of money very quickly because it, it is a very risky business. If you're a trader that's trading large volume, making money, then all of a sudden it dries up and you're still trading large, you'll find yourself in, in trouble. By the way, this is what I traded yesterday. You want, to, you want to see it in the written form? There you go. I traded, um, I think I figured out it was 18,000 lots yesterday, which for me is sitting up here in Port Douglas has got to, is certainly a record about 13% of the market, which um, is probably larger than it should be. I'm not comfortable trading that large um, size with the market and the overall volume of the market. It's usually not a good sign. It can be a sign that I might be over trading. Off the Saigon we go. Actually, 88. Ten years thrown over that six and a half bid. We open. You can go crazy in this weather. It keeps raining. Really, your day doesn't. Your day never really has a start. Your day really doesn't have an end. I look at it more along the lines of when is the market shut and when is the market not shut. And pretty much nowadays, the market is. Okay. Open I'll from, from you know 8:30 on Monday morning till six o'clock Saturday morning. My perception is is that, is that the nature of the market is 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 constantly evolving. Um, so, so do you as a trader, um, constantly have to evolve with the market. And the best way to do that is to just uh, literally, I just have to just really stare at it very hard. Just really stare at it really hard, you know? I just stare at it. And then it'll come to me. When I was trading my own account, I dreamt about the market and trading. And I, I, I had my first winning trade in a dream two months after I stopped trading my own account. They were always losers. You know, you'd buy something and it'd go against you immediately and you panic attack, what do I do? Do I get out? Do I add to it? Uh, and those are the kind of dreams I, I was having. And now with 24 hour trading, I wouldn't, I, I don't know, I've got customers who call the SICOM desk, which is the overnight market, every hour, right through the night. I've sort of learned patterns that happen in the T-bonds that seem to repeat themselves, and that's what we're doing, is just looking at patterns that happened in the past that seem to have got it right more than wrong, and uh, setting them in the computer so if that pattern does occur again, to let us know. Hi, Larry, it's Van speaking here. How are you? Good. My strongest signal tomorrow, it looks like, uh, I guess, what we call our oops, if we open lower than today's low. Mm -hmm. My style of trading is all based on one trader, and that's Larry Williams. And uh, he is, in my opinion, the best trader in the world, and he's proved it many a time. When what should work doesn't work, you got great, valuable information, incredibly information. So I like what's happening down here. I see some bullish stuff. I'm looking, gee, I like this triangular formation or whatever. I want to get long, two bars above. i got to be a buyer there. Notice what you have, though, our old friend, the outside bar, higher high, higher low, lower close. We want to be a buyer, the next bar. And he turned 10000 into $1.1 million, and no one's ever got any close to it. He's the best trader in the world. I want to trade like he does. And so his approach is, yeah, he goes for five-mile run every day. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't drink very much. He has like a zen approach to the markets. He doesn't watch them all day. Want to have a bet? Are we betting now? Are we betting money? 
I'm gonna have a bet on something. You think it's a bet? I bet you it doesn't rain here while we're still sitting here and having lunch, and we're okay, gonna be here. How much are we betting? Five dollars. Okay then, you're on. Shay. Okay then. Done. What's, ah, what's your name, by the Julie. way? Julie. Julie, I'm John. John. Five dollar bet. Five dollar bet that it is going to rain while you are here. That's that's good bet. Okay then. All right. I'm happy with that. <laughs> It's starting to rain already. I'm, I'm stuffed. You know, what if I said five hundred dollars? What would she have done? So I'd say, "You're on. Make it a thousand. I'd be like, hey, "You're coming home with me. I want you to trade for me this afternoon." <laughs> Hello. Well, how are the deck bills? You getting? Can you do any positive? How are the threes and tens? It gets so compulsive and obsessive that you keep going in there and doing it. And if you're consistently making money, you sort of, <clears throat> in a way, you probably create these problems for yourself by, you know, you're winning, you're winning, you're winning. And you, you want, you know, you want to have that a bigger trade or, or, or win bigger, you know, and that's when you usually start losing. Usually lunchtime he'll ring me, I can tell by his tone of voice. Say hey, hello. <laughs> or, or we... I booked on a flight that afternoon. I know he's had a really bad day. And he'll sort of say, we're going to Bali at five o'clock, pack, pack the kids up. I've had a day where um, it's been, a, a, some economic data come out, has come out. I think it was an employment figure. And um, the data was bearish. So the market went to lunch at 12.30. Um, the bonds were, were weak, I think they're off 10. Anyhow, I got back from lunch and I looked up and uh, I think the Nikkei had taken a two, 2 or 3% dive. 2 o'clock comes, I'm 200 short. The market opens up 3 or 4 points higher. And of course, I'm trying to protect my position and BT start buying. So I sell another 50 and it goes against me straight away, 3 or 4 points. I'm short 250 now and there are no sellers. It rallies 3 or 4 points, so I sell another 100. You know, not even taking into account the flight to quality, not even thinking, just thinking that these are too expensive. I'm 350 short now, and it's really starting to look a bit serious. It rallies another five points, and I sell another 150, so I'm 500 short. And at this stage, it's looking at about half a million dollars, and I'm just screaming out, sellers, sellers, give, you know, give me a seller. You know, I want a seller so I can get out. Sellers, sellers, no one knows what's going on with me, of course, because it's just mayhem in the pit. I could taste blood in my mouth, and I was just, my heart was beating. You know, I was looking at about $700,000. I was looking, I was thinking about my wife. My life was just flashing in front of me, seeing her out the house. Um, and I'm there screaming, sellers, sellers, sellers. And there's just, all of a sudden, the market just goes dead quiet. And there's just one guy, or a minute, just bidding for 200 at the high, going like 57 for 200, 57 for 200. And I'm going, if I have to pay any, high, you know, three points higher, it's going to cost me over a million dollars. That's going to be me out of the game. And all of a sudden, sellers came in, and sellers came in hard. And they, and and before I could buy them back, the market came off five points, came off another five points. I bought them back and took a took a half a million dollar loss. And I was just very happy to get out at a half million dollar loss. I mean, I have to try and keep myself together as much as I'd like to kill him. Um, you can't. It just makes the situation worse. And, yeah. you know, he could lose everything. He's one of those traders that, yeah. you know, could end up with nothing. And I'm not prepared for that to happen. So it's just a matter of me sort of keeping it together and so, letting him go and do his thing. <laughs> President Yeltsin is preparing to quit, have sent a shiver through the world's markets that have even reached Wall Street, sending the Dow crashing more than 350 points. Too much confusion everywhere. We have a major meltdown in stocks in Japan. We have a serious problem with the stocks in the United States today. Bond markets are all over the map. Our coverage this morning begins with attempts by the Australian Reserve Bank to protect our dollar overnight in New York. An intervention which caused a temporary surge before the sellers moved back in for the kill. Um, oh, last couple of days, just crazy. Um, the dollar got nailed and our markets came off in, in response, so we had a couple of the biggest days the exchange has ever had. Um, you can hear my voice, I'm just so exhausted after that.
started on in the middle of the night last Thursday night and just been uh, violent Aussie currency moves on the downside obviously um, we were looking at a Mark was anticipating a half a percent interest rate easing. In fact, it looks like we could be having a full basis point up. Uh, I haven't heard any horror stories on the floor. Often with those sort of moves, you get some of the locals uh, get killed and, and go out of business, go bankrupt. I haven't heard any of those stories, which is, which is lucky. the bills to trade 100 points under cash, seeing as they'd been a premium to cash for so long. So um, I caught everybody out a bit, including myself. I'm sure there's peop some people that did quite well that were, you know, and I'm normally a very bearish trader. I mean, I love the bear trade. I love being short. And yet we had the biggest bear move in years, and I lost money. I prefer not to comment on how much money I lost. I may put it this way, it was, it was, it was over a million dollars. So we're going the fastest way, right? Speed is of the essence, man. Well, Time is money. Because, uh, 60, uh -huh. 60 along here is unfortunately. It's a problem with the police. They got their little unmarked cars running around here. <laughs> so what sort of work you do? Oh. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> right, uh, right now, I'm not doing much of any work. Mm. I speculate on international interest rate futures. OK. There you go. That's where the money is. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Heaps of money. Sure. <laughs> All going out right now. Yeah, but it's been like that for years. Sometimes it goes, sometimes it comes. Hey, it seems, it seems to me you know a bit about the business, mate. Well, you learn a fair bit when you're in a taxi. Mate, it's, uh, I can smell the air. It smells dirty. Lots of car exhaust fumes. Lots of people milling around like a bunch of rats scurrying around, wondering what the fuck they should be doing with their lives. <laughs> it looks to me like. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. I, um, I may, and that's another thing. I've come back to Sydney, and so my attitude changes. All of a sudden, I'm like this big asshole. All of a sudden, this is like this is pre pre training for going back to that that mongrel floor and having a go down there. Yeah, that's true. fucking place. No, I don't. I love it. Oh, there we go. Oh, this is fun. This is fun. Trying to make some fucking money, that's for sure. And it's been such a difficult week, and it's going to be a few casualties, which is always a bit of a difficulty in our market. You know, whenever you get some massive movement like this and the leverage and gearing that the futures market provides, there's going to be a few casualties. And the broker is the customer's friend, Aunt. confidant, whipping boy. I mean, sometimes when a customer's losing money, it's, it's very hard to pick up the phone and call him. Like, you talk to him and he said, what are you racking? And he said, oh. I really think this market's going up. I think it's a great buy around here. He goes, yeah, so do I. And he buys a bunch, and then the market goes down. And he's, you know, he's underwater. He's, he's losing serious amounts of money. It's very difficult to call that guy up and say, so, how's it going? What do you reckon? Let's have lunch, you know? How's the flight down? <laughs> how's the flight down? Ah, uh, you know, 
Same old shit. Yeah. I was fucking pissing now when I got here. I thought it was going to be snowing here. I was looking to see ice on the sidewalks. Yeah, well. You know, summer's coming. Cheers, man. Cheers. Step bills are 52 offered for 100. Am I working any? What am I working, please? Just have a look at that. Yeah. I mean, that's, 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 you know. And that's a move. That, that, that's a, that's a big move. That's a movement without any sign off by any of the authorities. It's easy to look about, look at it in retrospect, but to, to work out why it happened. Still, this is the busiest yeah. 10 days without any sign off that I, that I can recall. Mm. I caught this little bit. <laughs> See, from there to there, I caught that. That was easy enough. <laughs> this bit here? No, I didn't. Yeah, maybe I thought I could write up the old poo poo shoe with that one. Let's see. Lottery tickets? No, they don't work. They're worse than anything. Unless you win, of course. When I lose money, I try to psychologically punish myself a little bit. And the best way for me to do that is to articulate to people my losses and for me to visually look, look and see, wow, there's so much money I lost, right? It helps me deal with it. It's just my own way of doing it. It's a lot, it's a lot cheaper than spending $100 an hour with a shrink. <laughs> Morning, man. Tip top. The worst thing that can happen as a local is to have no interest in the market. Have it very stable price and no buyers and no sellers. How long are you down for? Uh, just till Friday. Well, that's not true. If, if, if things pick up later on in the week, I might stick around. But, you know, I got a few things I want to get my position the way I want it. Um, and I want to see if I can make a quid because I haven't, I've lost, lost heaps of money the last two weeks and it's... Try to make an end any for a while. Well, yeah. It's weird that I come back on the day that the market decides to act fucking normal for the first time in two weeks. Oh, yeah. Still, I think it might be a busy time coming up. <laughs> I hope you're right. I'm doing a competition, trading competition, and I'll start next week. You are? Yeah. Sort of a, a trading competition? Yeah. I'm, using, I'm just using a mathematical formula. It's a computer system. <laughs> The whole thing. There's about 150 people at last few years. 150 people are in this? Yeah, because if you what win... Is, what do you get? You get a million dollars to trade with for the next year. You get three big winners in a row, you're away. All oh, right. Because what happened, like, a couple of years ago, when Larry Williams is a big trader. Yeah, yeah. And um, there was this one guy that was beating him. The guy covered his position near the top, did really well, and then started the trade and blew up and lost the whole lot. Oh, really? <laughs> really? And then Larry won. Three for five. Yeah. Should yeah, you should have taken the money and... Oh, that's half the problem. Know when to uh, pull the reins and pay the money. Yeah. You have a, a big loss. You really have to come back, come back from it, and that's that's pretty hard. Coming back and trying to get yourself back in the routine of of just chipping away and making little bits and not um, not risking too much and just really trying to stay on the ball and stay focused. He'll have a huge loss. He'll start meditating. He he goes to add your bookstore and buys. <laughs> All the mindfulness and Buddhism books the and books. yeah, starts burning incense and goes on a really spiritual trip for a while and then focuses and gets back into it. Okay, mate. Where's Aussie Dollar at, please? We're still close to fifty nine. Oh shit. Well, we're not out of the woods at this stage. Now the other thing that I've heard that it, that it is. When the Aussie popped above 50, 59 at lunch, 
that was buying in Asia from a US investment bank. And at the same time, dollar yen was, was flat. So dollar yen didn't change and we rallied, indicating someone is exiting the currency. And I've heard from a reliable source that, that the hedge funds are now rolling their Aussie for one week only, where before they were fixing it one, two and three months. I'm, I mean, I'm unwinding a bad position, okay? So I'm, I'm looking to just fucking get out, okay? You take, you use your discretion. Thank you, man. Yesterday, between 4.30 and 4.40, it's only a 10-minute window there, but that's when the markets were closed. They intervened in the Japanese yen. The Aussie dollar rallied 50 points. Now look at this. We're down at 60-14. We're gonna, this market's going to get hammered on the opening. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start getting my clothes on. Look at this. The three years, the three years of 32-34. That's down 17 points from the last trade on Psycom. Oh, excuse me. That's the, uh, that's the 10 years. My apologies. That's only down a couple of points. Yeah. Hi. We're going to open lower, aren't we? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, any particular reason why you're calling me? All right. Well, listen, <clears throat> I've got 125 March bills to sell on opening. You got it. Okay? Well, listen, you've got an order to buy. I've got an order to sell. Do your best. I'll let you go, okay? Bye. Hopefully I'll get some bills sold before they crash. Look at the currencies on its knees. 6011, the currency's down 34 points. The currency's down 40 points since the close of Psycom. They gotta fucking go to 24 hours a day screens. This bullshit to have these hour and a half windows where you're fucked. Hello. Where at? At 38? I'm happy with that. Good fill. I'm sure it is. Thank you very much. Bye. It's a good fill. It's a good fill. Yeah, I think October could be a very bad month. Yeah, that would be a great month for us. Yeah. We'll be buying, everybody else will be selling. <laughs> That's how they make lows. Wow. How are you doing in the championship? It's pretty good at the moment. We're up 21.3%. <laughs> so I believe we're coming third. I've taken quite a few different signals and some I haven't taken. And But uh, anyhow, in the, in the wash it's worked out that we're up 21% and I think that's pretty good. Nearly $800 billion was wiped off the value of shares on Wall Street overnight as the Dow Jones Industrial Index suffered its second biggest points loss ever. The Australian share market is described by some analysts as having even further to fall than that in New York. And this could mean that there'll be a harsh sell-off when the Australian market opens this morning. The market's scared. I don't know about bearish, but scared. Although even still, it's not as scared as, the, as some other markets around the world. I mean, the Dow, I think there's some real fear going on over there. And the amount of money that's been going into the U.S. market over the last, well, since about 95, just pouring money into the, into the U.S. stock market. If, if that money starts to pull out, you know, this could go substantially lower. I think there are quite a few people hoping that it'll find a level now and then start to come back. <laughs> I don't focus on who I'm trading with. I focus all of my energy and uh, on on the on the market itself and where where I perceive the market headed. Well, there's a rumor of intervention in the uh, yen, so all the interest rate markets took off and the spies just followed suit. So uh, we got a high at 35. I guess we buy a break of that. How's the December offer at seven?
hindsight's 2020 right through the asshole, and, and, I, and I don't really want to look back too far or look ahead too far. I'm trading for the moment. I'm trading for the moment. I'm, I, am, I, am, I want to be the moment. I want to be a part of the moment. Future, past. believe it's happening to you especially if you know you've been you've been having a quiet period and you just you know maybe hadn't made a bunch hadn't made much money in a while and then you put on a trade and it goes your way and you add to it and suddenly you're on a roll and suddenly you think what's going on here you know you're trying you're trying to work out the sums your hands are shaking you're sweating you're thinking I know I'm up I don't know how much I'm up but I'm up I'm up big this is a fucking great market to be trading on, I'm telling you. You have no idea. You have no idea how good it is when it's like this. It's out of control. This is the mistake I made back in June. I lost all my money. I didn't get off my lazy ass and get down here for this. And this time, I was very lucky that I was down here already, so I didn't have to fly down for it. I just stayed put. And then, and then it all started. This shit started to hit the fan. I mean, you know, these SEP bills are down 60 points from where they were on Monday morning. If you sold 500 on the opening, market moves 60 ticks your way, you're looking at uh, three quarters of a million dollars. Bang, like that. And it happens too, I mean, people do. There's a guy down here, John, he takes very big positions. He would, he would have at least had one day where he made a couple of million dollars in quick fashion. I didn't want to summon the whole thing, but I... Well, I make money, I pretend like it hasn't happened. I don't look at how, I don't look at my bottom line. I don't look at my statements. I don't don't even think about the money. I only look at for the next trade. I had a pretty good morning. Then uh, just going into lunch, the market rallied, and I uh, got caught short. So I, I, I was down at lunch, but I've just come back again. Our data is terrible. <laughs> I've just had um, I got Genesis to send me theirs. Because every time I give Larry a system and he sends it back, we're just getting totally different results. Yeah. Rumor of intervention, sorry it wasn't true. Oh, I don't know, I just heard that uh, it was an unfounded rumor. Yeah. So, where do we get out of these trades? It's all quiet enough for the guys to sign off, then they send the chits up and then we do the data entry side of the actual trade. So you got two sides to it, as well as the um, the, price, the, the actual guys behind the booths and their back offices. So you got like four sides, you could basically say they have to make sure that one piece of paper goes through for the client. And then they can go home. And then the girls are here till one o'clock in the morning. And it has to be done. So. Every day. It was a messy close this afternoon. Everything looked okay at about, you know, two o'clock, three o'clock. Looked as though it was hanging in, the currency was all right, and there was some confidence coming back. But that smash in the last 20 minutes. Obviously, they were intervening in the dollar. Yep. This is about three o'clock in the afternoon. Yep. Australia's getting pounded because the big boys yep. are pounding it. One of the reasons that they're selling the Aussie dollar so strongly is that it's the only Asian currency that's got some liquidity. I mean, New, oh, Zealand, really? New Zealand dollar's got some liquidity, but if these guys, for example, want to sell the ringgit or sell the Thai baht... Everyone's backing off on it. There's yeah. no liquidity, yeah. so they can't get set. And so that is an argument to say that the fall in the Aussie is being exacerbated because we are a mature market. Once the speculators get big enough that they are controlling and, 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 and hammering into currencies, the central banks are going to throw their hands up in the air and say, we can't handle this anymore. This is not to our benefit. 
And when the banks decide that, they can close the game down. Yep. I, I think we'll look back in 20 years' time at this period in time and say, wow, those were the glory days of speculating on currencies. Yes. <laughs> I used to go on it fair. She's gonna cry when the telephone never goes. It's gonna be auction. It's time to spend some money. We've also got the uh, original painting by ex Wallaby John White which has only been at $100. That is a very cheap for a painting by an ex-Wallaby. Ladies and gentlemen, $100. Get up there, put your name on the board. There it is, John. This Michael Jordan never been used basketball. Where's the bidding going to start? Let's go. $5,000 bid right off the bat. That was my top price. Six, six, seven, seven. Take a little bit. Up 10,000 out of it. 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 Up that's, 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 that's very nice of you to bid it up. Just, just bid the three years up tomorrow morning on the opening. Yeah. Even 85 to. bid! 85 bid the three years! That'll make me real happy. There's the rest of my three years. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Just work 150 and 4. How about a question here? Yeah. Where were you, Daddy? I've been over with my house, working. You know, trading. Working, working. Working, working. Working, working. What have you been doing? I'm playing. Playing? Yeah. And working, too. And working? Kingston. Kingston. How are you, man? He's Kingston the Wonder Dog. Because we all wonder what he is. We all wonder what you are. What are you anyway? What kind of doggy are you? Hmm? Okay, I'm underneath. Okay, grab a crayon. Crayon, here's a crayon. Gray crayon. You lose your hunger for it. And if you don't have the hunger to trade and, and, and do it, then you won't be successful, you know? You also get sick of the market and sick of doing what you're doing. And you go and try to find something else to do and <clears throat> the market's your life, really, so... It's not... It's um, very important to try to create hobbies outside of work, you know. You just go in and, and make money every day. You're not putting anything back into society, you're not creating anything. You just yeah. either go in, lose money, make money, and that's... It's like going to track every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, like it's a monotonous thing. It's not, it's not healthy, it's not a good environment, and you're not doing anything good for anyone. Right out of the top. Save that one for the course. The dog leg to right. You want to hit one? No, man. From a three on. I reckon there's always a purpose behind why things happen. So maybe the fact that, that I got creamed in the markets in, in June and lost several million dollars in a very small period of time, and this land fell into my lap in late July happened for a reason. It was just interesting how karma works. I mean, it's just, it was kind of meant to happen. That's the feeling I got before I even went and looked at the piece of land. I said, shit, this is meant to happen. This is kind of like, you know, a bit of a cosmic event here that, you know, this land wants me to kind of be, uh, be its owner. It's always been my dream to own a golf course, but, be, but more importantly, uh, build golf holes. If you have money, you have to be accountable for your money. You got to do the right thing about your money. I've never been a philanthropist as far as donating money to things. This, this to me, is a donation. This is this is this is a 
The money that I spent on this piece of land is a donation to the, to the future people of this planet. It doesn't matter what I paid for, and it doesn't matter what it's ever going to be worth. Go in, go in. Right? Because this land is now officially off the market. This is probably the single thing that in my entire life that I've done that I really, I, that I'm actually proud of. What do you hear when you're out here? What do I hear? I don't, do you hear a car? I don't hear a car. I don't, do you hear any airplanes? I don't hear any airplanes. I hear yeah, nothing not except nature. Yeah. And that's what, that's, that's got to keep it that way. So if you add nine to go to 18, which, which general direction would you be going? I'm looking, I'm looking at, I'm looking at going out that way. Right. Okay. Down, down the beach to the, to the uh, yeah. south. So I can't... Along the beach. You could build, you could build four golf courses here if you wanted to. You could build four 18 holers on this property. There's that much land here. This is classic lynx style piece of land. Um, I intend on trying to keep it that way. I did lose and paid them. Had to buy the drinks. Although there's no magic pill to solve the world's financial headache, the hopes of many have been raised by President Clinton's speech. Well, hey, the, the spy pitch. Miss Bramble, that's me. Did you see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you yeah, see yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. What are you doing with the spy? I was in the spy train that day. <laughs> <laughs> Most analysts believe the Australian dollar's rally will be shortly involved. Oh, oh, shit. Typical <laughs> Australian optimist. <laughs> How's that? Like the, uh, the economics and the Aussie dollar takes higher priority on the news than the fucking politicians. <laughs> yeah. well, it, is more, it is more important. The government can do less in the global economy than the market can. And I think, I think that's how it should be. I believe Alan Greenspan is more important to the American economy than Bill Clinton. And that's just taking his personal problems even out of the equation. When you growing up, what was on the top of the news? You know, uh, you know what I mean? It, it, it's just, I mean, the yeah. whole, the whole thing, the whole thing is spiraling up yep. in, into this thing where all of a sudden the whole world and everybody's concerned. I mean, walk, talk to a cab driver in Sydney about the bloody market. You know what I mean? It's just, yep. the whole thing is spiraling, spiraling, spiraling. And it's just going to be interesting to see how it ends up, mate. Are you going to want a glass of wine, John? Certainly. The best thing that you ever said to me, Craggy, you give a good phone. And that's the highest compliment that can be paid to a fucking a spieler. One of the services that a broker can provide is massaging a client's ego yeah. position. Okay. Ego position. Okay. Now, now, dude, tell, no, tell, no, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me you don't do that. I tell, never do that. I you never, never do that, that ever? I'm, I'm never going to pander to you if I think you've got a I'm position. I'm not calling it pandering, John. Yeah. Mass, uh, or I'm never going to, sorry, massage your position. Because, for one reason, there's no way in the world that a broker who works for you can ever know what your position is. Because you turn positions so so quickly that, you know, my mind doesn't stick that long. I mean, you do because it's your business. Right, you right. might have been long the curve at 38, got to 40, and you're going to twist something against the bill, so you, you knock the curve out here because that's going to produce you something over there, and you buy back at 31, and it goes to 41. All I, I said to you... On my, on, my third, on my third point of, the, of yeah. the services that a broker provides, maybe what I really should have put in there was... Um, uh, drugs and sex, I don't know. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Which one? Which uh, that one. Ugh. Jeez, okay. there's heaps on that plate. I'll okay. that one. <laughs> Spangled Emperor is one of the best reef fish. Spangled Emperor and Red Emperor, which are related. And 13 Most people like to catch and 37. Coral what spreads was that? Oh, those are the separate decks I put in. I forgot all about those. I guess I should write that one down just in case I uh, get too drunk tonight and uh, forget all about it. No, that's all right. I'm just going to write it down. What do you reckon, Hammer? Can't believe it's all 38 on the curve. That's just... And the fish? Yeah, yeah. Ben? Very nice. Um, you bring your hammocks? Am I still in the bid in the spa you pulled up? I just wanted to uh, chat. We finally got the results of the uh, competition come through, and uh, we've come 17th. I think there was 103 people to start off with, so it was a reasonable result, but I was a little bit disappointed. Uh, I didn't really get my targets, and uh, I don't know. I found it a little bit uh, tricky this year, and I just want to see what you thought of it. 
Well, obviously the winners thought it was an easy year. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you, you win some, you lose some. It hasn't been a straight path to heaven, Pan. Yeah. Now, that's the life of a trader, though. Is, is we get used to getting beat up and saying, hey, that's going to let us down. We just go right back on and keep doing what we do, because if you stay in this game, you win. Big gains on key Asian markets have propelled Australian shares to their biggest single-day gain since last October. Wall Street provided the impetus overnight, with investors displaying their...